Hello, we're back aboard USS Cod and we're up front where the business end is. I'm just aft of frame 16 and we are in the forward torpedo nest of USS Cod. Hello, I'm Paul Ferrace, director of the USS Cod Submarine Memorial and we're going to talk about some serious stuff today. We're going to talk about how we programmed our torpedoes in World War II. Now, Suffice to say, for another day, we will talk about how bad the Mark 14s were and the problems with the Mark 18s. But the American uh, fleet submarine has an ingenious and very advanced uh, system to mechanically program the torpedoes while they're in the tubes. And we're going to discuss uh, the three major uh, parameters that could be set in a torpedo. Uh, we'll start with... Uh, the speed. Now the Mark 14 torpedo has the ability to run at high or low speed. That will give you a range of about 4,500 yards at high speed, which is about 55 miles an hour, uh, or up to 9,000 yards uh, at low speed. Um, submarine captains rarely fired low speed long range shots. The few that did were severely reprimanded. Most of your engagements were done roughly at about 1,500 yards, maybe 12 to 1,500 yards. Uh, and you certainly wanted to have the torpedo running at high speed. Uh, so the uh, top of the torpedo has a little socket where a spindle comes down and engages the socket. Now I'm showing you, you know, high tech stuff here, but we're gonna show you the real thing in a minute. Um, uh, so you could set the high or low speed. And that's done, and I'm, I'm looking at torpedo tube number one here, and that's this, there's a little lever here, uh, spring loaded, so I can pull the spindle out. Uh, we'll do some B-roll footage of that. Uh, right now it's, uh, it's out, so it's in the tube. If I wanna pull it in, I'm withdrawing it, and there's an indicator board both here in the forward room, a lighted indicator, and one up in the conning tower to say the spindles have been withdrawn. In this case, they're inside the tube, not out as they would be to actually set the fish. Uh, so it's kind of reverse, reverse here from the conning tower, uh, because when you blast the torpedo out of the tube with that shot of compressed air, you don't want to shear off your spindles. We've done that here on the boat recently, and it's not fun to replace a spindle, but we've been able to do that. So uh, that is the actual in and out, and this is your speed crank right here, and you have two settings, high or low. And we're gonna leave it on high, because that's just how you did that. Okay, and again, uh, Evan uh, was just in the tube, risking life and limb to get a close-up of that uh, high-low speed spindle. Now, <clears throat> over here next to it is the depth setting. And again, you have your in, which means it's withdrawn. Out, it's in contact with the torpedo. And that's uh, also uh, a, a, a spindle socket at the top of the torpedo toward the back. And here is my crank. Now, it's interesting, I can set it for zero or five feet. Now, there's no graduations between zero and five, and I think that might have to do with the fact that they ain't no guarantee that uh, you're going to get a precise depth. But starting at five, they're going to claim precise depth. And of course, we all know the Mark 14 had a very uh, a big problem with uh, depth setting. So you might set it for five, but you got 15 or 20 feet uh, until they corrected that. But this is how you would set the depth you wanted the torpedo to run. Now, I just passed 12. It's 12 feet right there. Um, bigger ships like carriers and battleships and, and heavy cruisers, you might want to set that bad boy, again, if it's running, running accurately, at 15 to 20 feet. Hitting them lower uh, in the water is always better. Uh, destroyers, lighter ships, you would probably want to hit maybe eight feet, seven, eight feet down. Um, you don't want them to pass harmlessly underneath the hull. So that's done uh, right there. So depth setting, pretty critical, particularly uh, 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 early in the war, high and low speed. 
Uh, but the American submarine torpedo system has an ingenious gyroscopic uh, control system. Uh, up in the conning tower, we have the marvelous torpedo data computer, which uh, basically integrates uh, uh, the ship's own course speed heading, uh, the determined speed and heading, uh, relative bearing of the target, and uh, integrates and crunches that data and gives uh, what's called the gyro angle. Now, uh, it's the angle at which the torpedo, once it leaves the tube, has to turn to so that it will meet the ship at a place in time and space in the future uh, because he's moving, you're moving. So uh, all of those parameters are being taken into account by an analog fire control computer in the conning tower. And it's going to tell you, uh, given the course and speed of both the target and the submarine, what the gyro angle the torpedo needs to turn to so that it will intercept the ship. Uh, and that's a little more uh, of an involved system. Um, it starts with the TDC. The TDC then talks to this device that I'm doing a great job of blocking, but I'm just going to sit down on this 82-year-old stool covered with uh, gypsy green oil cloth, and that's literally what the uh, blueprint says. Uh, it's upholstered with. And we are now looking at <clears throat> the gyro setting indicator regulator number one. I'm going to assume the one in the after room is probably number two. It's also known as the Mickey Mouse. Why that? I guess because of these two black dials. These round dials sort of look like Mickey Mouse's ears. Uh, but uh, yeah, we've got some great B-roll footage. Now, the gyro angle is being automatically set by a spindle inside the tube. Now, um, it uses Selsons and, and a whole lot of mechanical, electromechanical uh, interfaces, all which introduce the possibility of failure or, um, you know, uh, snags, uh, gremlins. So, um, Standing behind me would be someone, and maybe I'm doing it, depending on how you uh, uh, work out your fire control system. You have your, your um, uh, battle telephone socket right here. So the, uh, the GSIR guy might have his own headset, and he's hearing the gyro angle that is to be set into the specific torpedoes. Now, it has left and right uh, uh, settings, so the left bank or the right bank of uh, fish can be programmed. I'm not sure if you're doing one at a time or all three, uh, be that as it may. Um, if the if he knows since he knows the uh, the the actual gyro angle, if he sees these dials turning and there's a hang up, there's a problem. It's the correct gyro angle isn't being uh, set uh, for whatever reason. He can override and he can then manually set the gyro angle. And I'm a big guy, and we're talking, uh, this would have been done probably by a 22, 23-year-old guy, about half my weight. Um, but anyway, in size, I would imagine. But so he can manually set that, so that when the moment of firing occurs, that gyro angle is uh, correct and up-to-date, and uh, we don't miss the, uh, the target with the fish. So uh, thanks to the Arma Corporation, uh, they uh, devised uh, and built these systems. Uh, you'll see these things uh, in service in the fleet boats throughout the Cold War. Uh, now, after the war, I would say by 1950, they introduced the electronic uh, programmed Mark 14s. Those torpedoes are rebuilt uh, to basically eliminate the need for the mechanical spindles. They have a data plug, but I got to believe these are modified then to again ensure or at least monitor the uh, the gyro angle that's being set. Um, so it's interesting. The man working the GSIR up here literally is at the forward end of the boat. He is the man uh, closest to the enemy, shall we say, uh, setting those fish. And it's just impressive that I'm surrounded by a whole lot of bronze. Uh, the six tubes right here at the forwardmost 
uh, pressure bulkhead of the submarine. Uh, everything forward of that white painted insulated steel bulkhead is ocean. Uh, and while we're here, we'll point out all of the little Zerk fittings so that we can grease um, the uh, torpedo shutters and rollers out on the muzzle doors and the, uh, the uh, roller tracks. Everything needs to be greased and that's how you would grease it without having to go up into the superstructure and get wet. And over here, of course, are some uh, more Zerk fittings uh, for the port and starboard um, um, fittings that needed to be greased. It's just amazing to, to be up here, and uh, I certainly don't want to drop my phone or any pocket change. Uh, while I'm here, I can see, again, uh, the low speed, high speed setting here for uh, uh, tube four, and again, depth setting for tube four. It's amazing that it does go down to about 50 feet. Good Lord, I don't know what the heck you'd be hitting at 50 feet. Um, <clears throat> I'm not aware of any battleships. Maybe Ryan can uh, comment. Uh, did any battleship have a draft greater than 30 feet? Uh, but the option was there. I don't know why you'd set something that low, but you could. Um, now, in the event that you have more problems or gremlins in the system, now we program the torpedo for its speed, uh, its depth and the gyro angle, uh, but we can also fire from up here. And I'm going to squeeze past, by the way, Evan, get a great shot of this. This is, lift that off. That is original World War II upholstery. And uh, frankly, it needs to be conserved and addressed. And I don't want to put my lard tush back on this anymore today or in the future, but uh, that's the problem here. You want to, we don't want to uh, switch that out. We do want to conserve that. So uh, we'll be talking to some of our fabric conservator friends. Let me just get past that with as least amount of damage as I can inflict on that. You see what we're doing for our, vis our viewers? You're getting this exclusive content. Um, torpedo tubes are fired electrically from the conning tower. Uh, we'll do some B-roll footage of uh, the electrical firing circuit. But again, that talker in the room is relaying important information in especially fire one. And somebody up here, uh, not the GSIR guy, but some one of the other torpedo men, is when he hears the fire one, it's being fired electrically, but in the event there's a hang up, he's gonna hit the mechanical firing switch right here for tube one, little red guard. But that is the actual mechanical firing set for the tube. Right there, of course, tube one, tube three. And I would imagine if they're firing uh, number five down there, they might be doing that with their foot. You know, can I, can my grungy tongue, yeah, I can do that with my toe, no problem. So that's how we program uh, mechanically and fire uh, torpedoes up here in the forward room, and it's going to be the same for those uh, those tubes back aft. Those three foot longer tubes back aft, why are they longer than these? These are about 22 feet long. That gives you six inches of clearance on the nose uh, before you get the muzzle door. Three feet longer, as I said in a previous one, because the boats were designed for the possible uh, use of a universal torpedo uh, that's basically the same length as a surface ship torpedo, so it's three feet longer. So in the event that we didn't have enough torpedo production capacity, which in fact was an issue, um, had the universal torpedo been available in large quantities, submarines, fleet subs like COD, could fire them out the aft tubes. We had three foot longer tubes. Anyway, um, we're going to probably go up to the conning tower next and we'll show you the electrical. Okay, we're up here in the uh, conning tower at the uh, firing panels here. Um, this is where it's all done electrically. Over here we have the TDC a great subject for a future uh, program. Suffice to say, if you need to know something about the TDC right now, 
go to Greg Williams' great piece on the torpedo data computer at uh, the uh, USS Bakuna. Greg did a great job uh, talking about the uh, capabilities of the Fleet Submarine's torpedo data computer. So kudos to Greg. But right now we're talking about shooting. So I showed you the uh, uh, mechanical. Mostly it's done electrically. You fire one torpedo at a time. In this case, number three. Number three is standby. Uh, so that means we see these lights. Now, lights for number three right here. Pointers match, which means that the uh, TDC and the GSIR are talking and they're communicating. They're in synchronization. The pointers are matched. Uh, we will see this light come on to tell us the spindles are engaged. They are in their sockets and they are programming the torpedo. Uh, when you're ready to fire, this light will go out. This light will come on, ready to fire, meaning the spindles are pulled out and the pointers are matched and the, everything's working hunky-dory. So anytime you're ready, because remember the, uh, the data is being uh, updated in the torpedo while the spindles are engaged. So that's almost to the moment of firing. After the war, the electronic system allows you to update it to the moment of firing. But uh, the captain, we're standing by, the captain says, fire three, aye, aye, fire three. Push that button, stand by, he'll say, stand by four. And now we're looking at four, and four, fire four. That's how we do it. Now there's a talker up here who repeats the captain's message, and that's uh, to alert the guys in the forward room to mechanically fire it as well. So these are the absolute, um, the actual, uh, shall we say, executioner's buttons. That, that red plunger right there. Um, last time I was playing with that, uh, a Japanese Maru exploded. That's because they wanted my hand pushing the button for a Japanese television documentary. Uh, it's not like we're going to have anything explode me doing that today. Anyway, so uh, that's been a quick tutorial on um, how we program torpedoes uh, and fire them. Uh, remember to hit the like, subscribe button, the notification bell, and uh, come on back uh, with some great, uh, uh, for more great content. If you have any uh, comments or questions, we love answering questions. Um, if you have any corrections or something you'd like to add, please do, because uh, again, this is a two-way process. All right, so thank you very much.